Let's talk about the structures and physical properties of aldehydes and ketones, the topic of this chapter. And the first thing you have to know is that there is a commonality in the functional groups of aldehydes and ketones, and that is the carbonyl group. And we've seen this carbon with a double bond to oxygen before, and we call that a carbonyl group. And you see that in an aldehyde, the carbonyl group, here's our carbonyl group, has an R group attached to it, and it also has a hydrogen attached to it. And so that R group can be, it can be an uh, alkyl group, or it could be an aromatic group. And then of course we have our proton. But in a ketone, our carbonyl group is flanked by R groups on both sides. And the compounds that are shown here in the ball and stick models are propanal and propanone. And these are both three carbon molecules so you see propanol, so we have carbon one, two, and three. And then in propanone, which is also known as acetone, would be the common name of this compound, you can see that this is a three carbon molecule as well. And if you've memorized all of your functional groups, you would also know that carbonyl groups are found in carboxylic acids, esters, and amides. But what the take home message from this slide is, is that aldehydes and ketones both possess carbonyl groups. And you should also recognize that a carbonyl group contains a polar bond. The carbon-oxygen double bond is a polar bond because oxygen has an electronegativity of around 3.5 and carbon has an electronegativity of about 2.5. So that means the dipole is going to go in this direction, like that. And as we saw earlier on in the course, another way to represent the dipole in a polar bond, like in our carbonyl group, is to put delta, delta plus by the carbon and delta minus by the oxygen like that. Again, it doesn't mean that the oxygen has a fully negative charge or that the carbon has a fully positive charge. It's just the delta represents partial charges. So because there's a difference in electronegativity between the oxygen and the carbon, meaning that the oxygen is more electronegative, we put the delta plus next to the oxygen. So we have a polar bond, the carbonyl group. And so, since carbonyl groups are present in aldehydes and in ketones, we can conclude that aldehydes and ketones are polar compounds. And that brings us to this slide right here, which says aldehydes and ketones are polar compounds. And it's because of the dipole in the carbonyl group. It says right here, the carbonyl group is polar because the oxygen end is more electronegative. Again, the difference in the electronegativity values is about one, and that's significant. And so if you have a bunch of ketones, like are shown here in this figure, now the molecules are all tumbling around, you know, in, a, in solution, let's say, if it's a liquid, but what's gonna happen is since we have all these partial positive and negative charges, the molecules will align themselves in such a way that you will have the delta minus here on the oxygen they interacting or being attracted to the delta plus on the carbon because opposites attract. And then you see the same thing occurring here. We have another delta minus from our carbonyl bond from the oxygen and it's interacting or it's being attracted by an electrostatic force, right? Opposites attract to the carbon of another carbonyl group. And so the intermolecular force that's being represented in this figure is the dipole-dipole force. It's also important to note that aldehydes and ketones do not possess hydrogen bonding. And the reason why is because there's no oxygen-hydrogen bond in either aldehydes or ketones. Okay, now this slide is very important. Okay, now what I just said from the previous slide was that aldehydes and ketones cannot form intermolecular hydrogen bonds. You know what we could add to this? We could put here in, in a pure sample. So what that means is if I have a pure aldehyde or a pure ketone, so nothing else, just the pure aldehyde or ketone, there will not be any hydrogen bonding occurring. And the reason why is because there's no oxygen-hydrogen bond. Yes, there's a polar bond in the carbonyl that we just discussed, but again, there's no oxygen-hydrogen bond. Now here's where it gets really interesting. It says here, however, water can form hydrogen bonds to them. 
So what this is saying is that if you have a ketone or an aldehyde, and in this figure it's showing two ketones, it's saying that a ketone or an aldehyde can hydrogen bond to a water molecule. So if you have a solution of an aldehyde or a ketone in water, there will be hydrogen bonding occurring. And this figure shows how that hydrogen bond occurs. So let's draw on the lone pairs on the oxygens on our two ketones. So oxygen always has two bonds and two lone pairs, no exceptions. And so you can see that we have the delta plus on our hydrogen on the water molecule, which is hydrogen bonding to the lone pair on the oxygen of the carbonyl. So again, water can form hydrogen bonds to an aldehyde or a ketone, but again, an aldehyde or a ketone in a pure sample cannot form intermolecular hydrogen bonds. And so what if we wanted to compare the boiling points of an alkane, like butane, an ether, like methoxyethane, an alcohol, an aldehyde, and a ketone? What if we wanted to compare those? Well, what it tells us here, it says that carbonyls, and all carbonyl means is an aldehyde, an aldehyde, or a ketone. So instead of just saying an aldehyde or a ketone, you can shorten it and just say a carbonyl. So carbonyls boil at higher temperatures than hydrocarbons and ethers, but at lower temperatures than alcohols. And so if you look at the boiling points here, you can see it's very clear that um, butane, the alkane, has the lowest boiling point. Then we go to our ether, which has a boiling point of around seven degrees Celsius. Then we have our aldehyde and ketone. They're pretty close. They're, they're uh, around 50 degrees Celsius, uh, 49 for propanol and 56 for propanone. But then we have our alcohol, one propanol, which is a really high boiling point. Now let's label each one of these molecules with the type of intermolecular forces that it experiences. And the alkane, butane, is only going to experience London forces. Why? Because it is a hydrocarbon. And hydrocarbons only possess carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds, which are nonpolar. And so we only have the weak London forces in our butane molecules. And that's why butane has such a low boiling point. If we move up to an ether, an ether does have a dipole in it. So it does experience dipole-dipole forces. But what happens is that the dipole, so the polar bonds here, the carbon-oxygen bonds that I'm highlighting in red, even though they're polar, they're kind of blocked a little bit by these alkyl groups. So we have the ethyl group on this side and the methyl group on this side. So that kind of blocks or negates a little bit of that dipole-dipole interaction. Now I'm going to skip ahead to the aldehyde and the ketone, and I'm going to put them under the same umbrella. And they both experience dipole-dipole-dipole forces because they both possess a carbonyl, which is a polar bond, and we just discussed that. And I bet you already know why the alcohol has the highest boiling point by far. And the reason why is because it experiences hydrogen bonding. And that's because it has an oxygen-hydrogen bond. Now, a question that you might be asking is, well, if propanol has a boiling point of 49 degrees Celsius, and it's a three carbon aldehyde, and then you compare it to the three carbon ketone, propanone, it's got a boiling point of 56 degrees Celsius. You might be thinking, well, those are pretty close. Is the, can I differentiate between the two? Could I, you know, if I asked you to rank these in order of boiling point, how would I distinguish between the two because they're so close? And the answer is, for our class, you do not have to be able to um, determine which one is gonna have a, have a higher boiling point, an aldehyde or a ketone. Whatever order you put them in would be fine with me. And so let's summarize, going from a low boiling point up to, up to a high boiling point. So the lowest boiling point is going to be the alkane, like butane. Then going up from there, we have an ether. We have an ether. Then for the aldehyde and ketone, again, I told you, you don't have to be able to differentiate between the two. So you could put them in any order, it's fine with me. So we'll put aldehyde and then we'll put ketone next to it. And then of course, the highest boiling point is gonna go to what? To our alcohol. And so you should be able to rank an alkane, an ether, aldehyde and ketone, and alcohol in terms of their boiling points. And what is it based off of? Well, the low boiling points are attributed to 
weak, we'll put here weak intermolecular forces, and the higher boiling points are attributed to strong, strong intermolecular forces.